Deer farming is a potential livestock industry, bringing many economic benefits and values to people. So what is the process for raising and producing deer meat and antlers? Let's find out now with Trending Farm. Sika Park Farm, spanning over 100 hectares in Rangipo, houses over 1,500 Sika deer for antler, meat and dairy production. Annually, it yields over 220 pounds of deer antlers and 220,000 pounds of deer meat. The barn area is spacious, providing ample room for deer to live and exercise comfortably. Scientifically designed, the barn ensures optimal ventilation, roofing for weather protection, and an efficient drainage system. Segmented areas within the barn cater to breeding, rearing young, fattening, and disease isolation. Construction materials such as steel, steel mesh, and concrete are chosen for their safety, durability, and ease of cleaning, maintaining high standards of hygiene and welfare. Deer breed seasonally, typically in the fall. A female's estrus cycle lasts about 20 days and gestation is around eight months. They usually give birth to one or two fawns, which the mother licks clean. Fawns drink mother's milk for about four months before weaning. They grow quickly, reaching 60 to 70 pounds in a few months. Breeding deer are selected for their balanced health and alertness with smooth, shiny skin, bright eyes, a wet nose, and a pink, infection-free mouth. Male deer should have balanced, well-developed horns, and all deer should have a slim belly, strong limbs, and regular hooves. Newborn deer are fed milk initially, then fresh grass, hay, and nuts from three to five weeks old for fiber. They are fed twice daily, morning and evening, with food intake varying by age. Baby deer need more food than adults, with weaned deer requiring 2.2 to 4.4 pounds of fresh food per day, and adult deer needing 6.6 .6 to 13 pounds daily, depending on sex. Farmers allocate food to ensure even growth and provide constant water. To maintain health, a veterinarian regularly examines and vaccinates the deer. Deer are harvested for antlers at four to six months old. Workers prepare tools like a sterilized sharp knife, pliers, rope, salt water, antiseptic, and cotton wool. They clean the tools with saline and disinfect them with alcohol, 
and the area is sanitized to prevent bacterial contamination. An anesthetic is injected into the deer to calm it, and its legs are tied to keep it still. The deer is blindfolded during the process to prevent panic and fear. Deer velvet is a valuable medicine that has many effects on improving health, increasing vitality and supporting the treatment of some diseases. Deer velvet can be processed into many different dishes and remedies. You can use fresh velvet, dried velvet or cordyceps velvet. They will be stored frozen at a temperature of 2 to 4 degrees Celsius. Then put it in the slicer, spread it evenly on a plate, and then put it in the dryer at a temperature of 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. Deer antlers are cooked into drinking water or boiled for steaming. Deer will be harvested for meat when they are 18 to 26 months old. Deer meat harvesting can take place after the second or third antler harvest. They will be transported by specialized trucks with many ventilation compartments, ensuring air and temperature throughout the journey. The person in charge needs to monitor the deer herd carefully, recording all necessary information to ensure a safe trip and a sufficient number of deer to reach the processing plant. After harvesting deer antlers, the deer's hair is shaved off carefully with a sharp razor to avoid skin tearing. A knife is used to cut along the spine from neck to tail, and the skin is delicately separated from the body. Excess fat inside the skin is removed with a knife, and then the skin is rinsed with cold water to eliminate dirt and blood. The skin is soaked in cold water for 24 hours to soften it before being soaked in salt, in salt. A specialized solution is applied to bleach the skin, followed by another solution to reinforce it for increased durability and elasticity. Deer skin is commonly used to craft leather items such as shoes, gloves, and bags. The deer is hung on the floor and a torch is used to remove the remaining hair. Open the deer's abdomen from chest to anus. Remove all internal organs from the deer's stomach. Rinse the abdominal cavity with cold water. The worker will divide the meat into large parts. The tenderloin, thigh meat and bones are separated.
the worker will remove excess fat and tendons sticking to the meat. The entire process needs to be done quickly. Avoid shredding the meat and ensure dear meat quality. Deer meat is a nutritious food rich in proteins, fats, antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. It helps nourish blood, boost resistance, and support treatments for conditions like physical weakness, anemia, and kidney failure. Deer meat can be prepared in various ways, such as grilling, hot pot, stir frying, steaming, braising, and making salads. Which method have you used to process deer meat? Please share your comments. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell for more tips on breeding and processing. America's cattle industry is a huge economic sector, generating abundant supplies of beef, milk, leather and other products for domestic and international markets. Outstanding with its huge scale, with more than 90 million cows raised and contributing more than 100 billion USD each year, this industry plays an essential role in the national food system. There are more than 700,000 ranches, mainly concentrated in the states of Texas, Nebraska, Kansas and Oklahoma, with Texas having a cattle farming history of more than 300 years. Texas has favorable conditions for cattle farming, with 130 million acres of grazing land and home to popular breeds such as Angus, Beefmaster, Longhorn and Hereford. Here, farm owners have the choice to graze their cows freely. This method brings many benefits to cow health, the environment and economic profits. Cows that are regularly exercised are healthier, have fewer illnesses and produce better quality meat and milk. This method also helps improve the environment by reducing pollution, increasing soil quality and controlling weeds. Reduce livestock production costs by reducing feed, labor and facility costs. There are many ways to freely graze cows such as rotational grazing, strip grazing, concentrated grazing or combined grazing. To ensure safety and efficiency, farmers install safety fences and provide enough food and water during grazing. They use all-terrain vehicles to control grazing areas and the number of cows, avoiding losses. Cow's food on the farm mainly consists of two types roughage and concentrate feed. The amount of feed required for each cow depends on many different factors, such as age, breed, milk production, and environmental conditions. Farmers balance their diets to ensure cows receive enough nutrition to survive, grow, and produce.
In addition to main food, cows also need clean water, mineral salts, and vitamins. Clean water is essential for every function of the body. Mineral salts help maintain electrolyte balance and prevent deficiency diseases. Vitamins strengthen the immune system and improve overall health. Cows need to drink about 30 to 40 liters of water per day. Water troughs are located in grazing areas and barns, in locations easily accessible to cows. To provide cows with the necessary nutrients, farmers divide their meals into two parts grazing and feeding in the barn. When grazing outdoors, cows are fed fiber-rich foods such as grass, straw, and hay to ensure they have enough energy to exercise. Once back at the barn, workers use high-powered mixers to mix the ingredients, which include simple proteins, hay grass silage, corn silage, rolled wheat, minerals, protease enzymes, and water. One worker cleans the feeding trough before another brings in the mixer and distributes the feed to the cows. Like and share the video to receive many interesting things to come. On the farm, cows start receiving vaccinations against common diseases at two months old. Veterinarians oversee the process, and experienced farmers administer injections safely in the neck area to avoid major blood vessels and ensure proper subcutaneous delivery. The equipment is used carefully, with needles changed regularly to maintain safety and effectiveness. It's crucial that these procedures are carried out by trained individuals, as mishandling can lead to harm. And then push the air. It is advised not to attempt vaccination at home without proper training and supervision. Did you know cows can breed all year round? Before breeding, they will be tested for their overall health and ability to become pregnant. In breeding conditions, the farm owner will choose artificial insemination for cows to achieve the best results. Workers will prepare gloves, hormone injection tools, and lubricating equipment. The semen will be thawed in warm water to maintain viability. A breeding gun is used to introduce semen into the cervix ensuring proper placement for successful fertilization. In addition, operators also need to clearly understand the cow's reproductive tract to navigate AI. The cows will then be monitored until they become pregnant and give birth. Cows are pregnant for about 279 to 287 days. Workers will clean up dry grass and straw in the cow calving area.
After that, he will assist the mother cow in giving birth by skillfully tying the rope and pulling the calf out. The owner will massage and clear nasal congestion to help the calf breathe normally. The mother cow will then come and lick their outer amniotic membranes clean. For cows that are having difficulty giving birth, the staff at the farm will have to prepare and perform surgery and catch calves. The surgical process must ensure hygiene and disinfection. The calf is healthy and can stand up and walk within a few hours of birth. Calves will be given milk for about four to six months before switching to the raw feeding stage. The farm limits sudden weaning to avoid stressing the calf and mother cow. How do you evaluate the cow's reproductive process? Leave a comment below the video to let us know. After reaching 18 to 24 months of age and a weight of about 992 to 1322 pounds, cows are transported to the processing plant. Transport typically occurs early in the morning when the weather is cool. Cows are guided to the transport area via a limited path. They are usually transported by trucks or trailers. Trucks are designed to be airy and safe, providing enough space for cows to move and rest. A layer of sawdust is spread on the truck floor to reduce friction and prevent injuries. Trucks generally have three floors connected by mobile stairs, with each floor separated by an iron door. The operator checks these doors for safety before loading the cows. Using paddles, cows are guided onto the truck, with each floor accommodating about 10 to 15 cows to ensure comfort and sufficient oxygen. For short distances, cows are often transported by cart, with carriages connected by sturdy iron axles, allowing for the transport of a larger number of cows. Which shipping method do you think is more popular? Share your views with us. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. So since we don't really have any clue of what kind of difficulties that you could be facing in your farms, please don't forget to share all the problems you're facing and uh, obstacles you're going through as this will tremendously help us with our upcoming videos.